Are you managing Docker containers, creating, amending, deleting these containers? And you really want a nice user interface to be able to do that. Perhaps you're sick and tired of going to Docker Hub to find the image that you want, and you just want an interface that you can search the container that you want, it'll pull it down, you've got a nice interface to configure exactly what you need that container to have, and then a start and then a nice interface that you can see all the things that are running. Or look no further than Portainer. So Portainer will do exactly that, and it is really, really simple to set up. So follow me, let's go and have a look at just how easy this is to set up and gain access to your already running containers, and just how easy it is to set up a new one. And please, 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 please stop calling them Dockers. They're containers, they're not dockers. So let's go and have a look at exactly how easy it is to set up this product. So firstly, we're going to need to go and create a volume. So docker volume create container data. Now, all of these instructions, um, I'll put a link in the description, but they are all here. So um, you can see everything here, how to install it. Um, so we just ran the, the volume create, and now we're going to go ahead and run um, the community edition. There is a business edition, and the business edition will give you, um, you know, lots of uh, support and things like that. Um, but for our purposes, the community edition is perfect. So I'm just going to copy and paste um, directly out. Here. So we've got a Docker run. We're going to run it as a daemon. We're going to run it on port 8000 um, and 9443. Um, the container um, name is Portainer. It's always going to restart. Um, and then we're going to you know, run it as a, as a socket. And um, we're going to bind that socket. Um, and the volume that we're going to use is this, uh, this Portainer data volume that we created. And we're going to use Portainer CE latest. And as you can see, it's very, very quick to run. Um, I've actually already downloaded this image. Um, but if we now had a look, you can see there that it's running. It's running on port 8000 um, and also 9443. So if we were to have a look here um, and look at 10.104.1.131, we then get the... Um, the setup screen. So we go through, uh, we can create a username and password. Let me just set a password here. So we can see here that we have two containers, two volumes. Just click on this. We can see we've got one running, one stopped. Um, so let's click on here. We've got Portainer, and I'm actually running Artifactory, um, although it's stopped at the moment. Um, but the best bit about this is now that we can start managing everything in um, the UI. If we wanted, um, for example, to start up Artifactory, we could go across here. Have a look. I stopped it 32 minutes ago. Uh, make sure everything is OK. Um, I can just hit Start. And the container has started. Click on the logs. Here are the logs for Artifactory. Um, if we want to now go back to the containers, we can see Artifactory sits here listening on 8081. So if I take this URL and put in 8081. Here is Artifactory starting up. So a lot of people really struggle um, with Docker, getting it all to work and just managing the instance. Um, so this makes it really, really, really simple. Um, the best thing recently in Portainer is app templates. Um, so if you really are um, a newcomer to Docker, you can go through various different app templates, let it load up. And we can put something. So um, let's say we wanted to run MariaDB. 
So here's MariaDB, you can put advanced, um, which will do uh, port mapping and things like that. And um, we've already got a port mapping to 3306. It's going to go into valid MySQL. Um, so we can just hit deploy the container. So we can now see that it's been successfully created. We've got three containers um, and it's giving it a, a random name, but we can see it's running MariaDB latest. Look at the logs. You can see here that we're still going through and setting everything up. Now the best bit is if we wanted to go and create something else, we could do it here. We can also do it on the command line. So let's go to the command line and let's um, set up a Nginx container. Um, and then at the end of this, we should then be able to see it in Portainer. So if we just do a simple Docker run, uh, let's give it a name this time instead of uh, the generated name that uh, Portainer uh, gave us. Um, so we're going to need to run on a port. Let's do 8086. Um, we're going to bind that locally to port 80 because that's what Nginx runs on. Um, and we want the Nginx container image. Now that won't be locally on my machine, so um, it's going to go off to Docker Hub and download that. And there we go. So that has downloaded. Um, and that has started it. So if we now go back to Portainer, And do a refresh. We should be able to see here we've got web one, which is what we named it, which is the Nginx image. It's running on port 8086. So let's actually go and see if that is working. And there it is, Nginx. Now, the best thing we can now do is that we've got web one here. This is a container running. If we wanted uh, to make some changes uh, to run two containers or something like that, we can uh, click on this. We can, uh, in fact, let's go into this. We can look at all the information, but if we hit duplicate edit, we can uh, call this one Web2. Uh, we might want to run this, well, we will want to run this on a different port, so we can do 8087. Um, now, we might want a different version of Nginx to go and have a look at it. So let's um, just check that there's nothing else that we would want to change. Um, if there's any commands here, you might want to do some... Um, you know, override some commands or, or change your entry point or change your working directory, et cetera, et cetera. You can do all that here. Now, I'm just going to go over to the Nginx Docker page and have a look at its other tags. Um, so at the moment, um, latest um, has been created, but what we might want is uh, one, um, I'm just having a look down here. We might want version 1221. So we could do 1.22.1. And where we can get that from is here. So this is all the tags and that the Nginx image has got. And so we can actually have a look at some very old versions. We might want version. Uh, 175 now seven years might be pushing it a little bit um but if we wanted um some images say from three years ago here we go let's look at uh, uh 117.4 let's actually try 117.4 so if we now want 117.4 we can go down here and then we can hit deploy the container so everything about this container is the same, apart from it's called Web2 now. And we're going to use a specific image, 117.4. Now what that's got to go and do in the background is it's actually got to go and download that image. So it's not going to be instant. It's going to take a few minutes to go and get that and set that up. And there we have it. We've now got it running on 8087. This is 117.4. And the great thing about this is you could... Um, Customize your deployment strategy and mount some directories um, and actually run your code up against different versions of 
uh, NGINX and make sure that they all work. And without having to have a lot of different um, virtual machines, you can literally just have all of these different containers. So that's running on 8087. Let's just check that that's working. And there it is. It still obviously looks the same. And there we have it. That's how easy it is to set up Portainer. And I really hope that the web interface is really, really useful and you found some value being able to look at that. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to my channel. If you have any comments, please make some comments on my video. I will respond to them. And if you've got any suggestions for any future videos, again, please make them and I will try my hardest to see what I can do. So thank you very much.